what's happening folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Sinead O'Connor. And we're going back to the 1990 album, I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got. And the next track is, You Cause As Much Sorrow. And I'm curious about the inclusion of the word as, because without it, you cause much sorrow, straight and clear. You cause as much sorrow as what? It feels like it's half of a sentence or the opening phrase of a larger proposition. So, oh, Luca apparently wants to come hang out. So yeah, I'm curious if there is indeed another half of the sentence in question, or if it's a more, say, literary way to express the idea that a person causes sorrow, and someone who causes sorrow may do so willingly or deliberately, or perhaps unwittingly, or at least unintentionally, so in that regard, I feel like there's a lot up in the air, even if the essence of what's happening is pretty straightforward. So let's see what I can pick up on a first listen. This is Sinead O'Connor. The tune is You Cause As Much Sorrow, and it's from her 1990 album, I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got.
So, yeah, the first time around for the chorus, I thought she said dad, but I think it's dead, and obviously you cause as much sorrow uh, dead as you did alive. Sounds like it was still playing. Um, so, yeah, I have no idea who's being referenced, uh, but, yeah, the like, what was it, all you've done is destroy my life, um, presumably while living and even beyond the grave, so... It sounds very painful, and yet it also sounds like um, there's a. It's more about acknowledgement and not necessarily um, misery alone. So I'm really curious what people have to say about this one lyrically. Sonically, it was interesting when it started. It sort of reminded me just a little bit of like a Tori Amos tune. We had some piano, but of course the acoustic guitar as well. And eventually it kicked into a higher gear, so the chorus had a bit more pep or energy to it than did the verses. Uh, her voice had a couple really sweet moments, but it felt overall like lower and more breathy than some of her delivery, which also was reminding me a bit of Tori. Um, so yeah, a very different vocal performance than, say, um, Troy or... Um, Nothing compares to you, even. So I was intrigued by her um, vocal style in this one, and ultimately, without um, see, if you didn't know, it's July Fourth outside, and even though it's much later than you would expect, there's still fireworks uh, going on. But yeah, I was sort of keyed in more on the vocals than the lyrics per se, and only having caught flashes. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, again, if someone's destroying her life and causes as much sorrow, dead or alive, then it sounds like a lasting consequence. Um, and one wonders how they're causing sorrow from beyond the grave, because that would seemingly only be possible. What was it? Why can't you let it go? And I wondered if that was like a self-referential line, or if it was someone else carrying on the legacy of the deceased, um, and thus causing further sorrow. So... Not quite sure what's happening thematically, uh, but a very interesting one sonically and vocally in particular. Luca is going to be ridiculously adorable, which always makes it harder to get up because I don't like to disturb her when she's doing this. Um, is there anything else to say in the moment? I can't really think. I did like that acoustic guitar, though, which felt a bit more folksy than some of her music, which has more of like a you know, art pop type of sound. This felt a bit more folk pop, at least in parts. So yeah, let me know what you think. And Luca and I, when she is willing to become horizontal cat again, uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.